So the quick find algorithm is great, it works, understandable, but we noted that it had a real performance problem. So for 260,000 elements, it's taking me 46 seconds to union all those together. This time I ran it. And you know, the connected algorithm, super fast, just an array lookup or a couple of them, no problems. But union's just too slow. And, and the reason is this loop. So we've got this darn loop here and we just need to get rid of it. So why don't we try the idea of removing the loop. So instead of updating everybody's champion, we'll just update the champion for the loser. And it's it's easy to do that. We can just update the ID of the loser to hold the ID of the champion. And that's fine. We've gotten rid of the loop now. Yay! Um, but the the data structure isn't as efficient now to do the find operation. The find operation is going to be um, more complex. So let's make sure we understand how we need to use this data structure before we drill into the details of the code. The idea of quick union is to be lazy about the computation of the ID. We don't want to compute all of the IDs on the nose as quickly as possible. We want to delay that. So we're going to end up with a structure kind of like this. Here we have zero, who is by itself. One is by itself. And you can see here nine, two, four, and three are all connected. But instead of all of them having a single champion, nine, you can see here that three has the champion four. And so that's reflected in my ID array. So element three has value four in this array whereas two and four and nine all have the value nine. But in order for this algorithm to work, ultimately the ID for three and two needs to be the same. And the logical choice here is nine. It's the champion of everyone, the uber champion. But this means I'm gonna end up with a little bit of a loop when I go to find the ID for a given element. For two and four and nine, it's immediate. It's just the ID of the element. But for three, I need to loop. I need to move up. So it's the ID of the ID of three is the champion. The way we're gonna do this is to go up, if you like, through this structure, thinking of it as this kind of tree structure. We're gonna go up until we hit a root. So a root in this case will be something that is its own champion. So nine is its own champion and therefore it's a root. So find has gotten a little more complex in this approach, but union gets simpler. So here, instead of going through the entire array and updating all of the elements to have the same champion, all I need to do in order to union two elements is to simply assign one element of the array. So here, if I'm going to union three and five, five here has champion six, three has champion nine. All I need to do is move nine to be beneath six. So we'll take the champion of three and put it beneath the champion of six. So we're only going to update one element of the array, which is in this case at index nine. So you can watch this happening uh, through a demo. So here, if we union together elements, you'll note that immediately we have interesting structure because when I union, for example, let's go back. If, I, if I'm in this state and I union three and eight, well, the authors of the textbook have coded this so that the right-hand side always wins. Um, so the champion's gonna be determined from the right. And in this case, eight is his own boss. So what's gonna happen here is that three goes below eight. So note not three and four, just three. So we're only changing one element of the array. If we union six and five, it behaves just as it did in quick find. When we try to union nine and four, we do have to look all the way up, however, to find the champion of four. We can't just look immediately from four to three. We need to keep going from four to three 
to eight. So walking through our array, we start at the fourth index, we see three, we go to the third index, we see eight, that takes us to the eight index, which we see is eight itself, and so we're done. And now, once we have that, of course, we can just move the element there. Of course, I can run through these kind of demos in Keynote or PowerPoint, but it's more interesting for you to be able to run these demos yourself. And in order to do that, it's better to look at the code. You'll see that this structure that we end up with is exactly what we're going to end up with in our code if we execute this. Let's just walk through the output of the visualizer here. So we have initially the array uh, where every element is its own champion. And now we're going to join three and four. Again, three, the winner. Uh, now eight, the winner. And note the difference between quick union and quick find. Six and five, nine and four. And when we join two and one, you can see them getting together. Um, if we try to join eight and nine, it does nothing because they're already connected. If we join five and zero, um, they'll just go together like so. Seven and two. Um, again, seven was going to go under one. And the final join here is six and one. So if we have six and one, one is going to be the new champion. And what's going to happen here is zero will go under one. So we end up with the eventual structure. Again, it's interesting to look at other examples. This is just one example. Uh, what happens if we join everybody up to zero? Well, let's walk through that. Um, oh, 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 you can see that zero is constantly losing. And what's going on? Well, zero's losing here to five. And unfortunately, it's the champion of zero, which is four, which is going to get stuck under the five. So this chain just keeps getting longer and longer and longer. Um, and in fact, in general, we'll have a linear length chain. Um, what if we just flip those around and instead of flipping zero to always be the loser, let's make zero to be the winner every time. Well, in that case, we get the best case. This is the best thing that could happen. And what's interesting to note here is the big difference between quick find and quick union. Quick find always gives us the same level structure, no matter what we do. We're getting always everybody immediately below their champion. With quick union instead, you can get radically different results. So I can get this nice flat um, picture, or I can get this very tall, long picture and you can imagine that these are going to have really different performance when it comes to checking connectivity. So in this case, if I want to know is zero connected to one, what is the algorithm going to do? It starts at zero, goes all the way up to nine. That's the idea of, not, of zero. Then it's going to start at one, go all, all the way up to nine. That's the idea of one. And then it'll say, yes, they're the same. Um, that's going to get very different performance from this uh, graph over here, where in one array index, I immediately know the champion of zero and the champion of nine. And this difference is going to be borne out in the performance. So if you look at the performance here, what you'll see is that um, union, yet yeah, sure enough, is not so bad. It's, it's faster. We were taking 40 seconds for this number of elements. Now it's taking 20, so half the time. But look at connected. <laughs> we're, we're, we are, we're having some terrible, terrible, terrible times here. Um, what, what I'm using here, by the way, is random data. So these are randomly chosen indices. We are randomly unioning 262,000 things and then doing 262 random queries on whether or not things are connected. And union is not so bad, but connectivity is just a, a horror show. What does this do on some other data, some different orders? Well, well, let's try the algorithm. We go one to zero, two to one, three to two, etc. And and you'll see here the old guy's always winning, and so that means zero is going to be carried across the top here. 
Um, whereas if we choose the new guy to be the winner, well, we're going to end up with that same dreadful uh, tall thing. Not so good. Um, what about our 16 where we're going to pair everybody up? Well, let's pair everybody up. Then we'll take the twos into fours. Then we'll take, oh, well, there you can see a difference already. So remember with quick find, we had three elements under one here. And here we've got more structure. Um, let's now union up the pairs here of the fours. And we end up with this kind of structure. And we end up pairing those two together, we'll end up with this. Um, one thing that's interesting to note here is how deep this tree-like structure is getting. So um, if we start at the beginning, you can see that, well, initially we had 16 elements of depth zero. Um, now we have eight connected components with depth one. Um, here we have four connected components of depth two. Then we go to two connected components of depth three. And finally, we have one connected component of depth four. Um, and what's happening here is that the depth of the tree is going to be the logarithm of the number of elements. And that's happening because each time I join these pairs, I increase the depth by one. That's just for this particular example. This will come back to us, though. Let's look at some random data. So random 12, um, random stuff happening. <laughs> there you go. Um, that's random stuff. For coding quick union, we simplify the union operation. We got rid of the loop. We have to complicate, though, the find operation. And it's important to think about what this is doing. Well, we're starting with some element here I'm calling the root. That's the, the initial place where we start. And what we're going to do here is update that variable until we actually get up to the root. So while the root is not its own ID, we're going to update the root. Um, so you can think about that as it would compute through one of these examples. So for example, if I look for the root of 1, we'll start off with our root variable as 1, then we'll update that to 7, then to 5, then to 8, then to 10. And only when we get here will the loop exit, because now the ID of 10 is already 10. This is a root. So this little loop here is going to take time proportional, worst case, to the depth of the tree. So the worst thing that can happen here is that I'll start finding things down low in the tree, and it'll take time proportional to the height or the depth of the tree in order to get to the root. Um, and you can see from the numbers here that seems to happen quite a lot. <laughs> like I get some pretty dreadful uh, performance. Uh, let's see, when I ran this for the slides, I got uh, a little bit better. I was getting uh, about 90 seconds. but. Just to compare that with quick find, remember quick find was giving us almost instantaneous performance for connected. And the problem there was the union. So we sped up the union, and now we have a disaster with the find. So quick union is also too slow. And, and the problem here is it's actually worse in some ways because whenever we're doing the union, we actually have to do a find. Um, so we have to find the roots. So actually, in this case, all of these operations are going to be linear time. So we can see the problem of these two algorithms. For quick find, we have that loop in the union operation, which is taking linear time and it's killing us. For quick union, we don't have that problem. but we have another problem, which is that the find operation in general is going to get really expensive if our trees are tall. Ah, but that's the key. Is there is there any way I can keep these trees from getting so tall? Let's go back and look at the kind of choices we're making. 
When we union zero and one together, uh, one becomes the champion. Oh, great. When we union zero and two, well, two becomes the champion. Well, that was stupid. So why did we do that? It would have been so much better if we had just made one the champion. Why? Because then two would go under one and we wouldn't have had to increase the height. The, the problem here is that we're being mindless about picking our champions. And, and you can see where that's getting us. We're ending up with arbitrarily high trees for no good reason. So how do we fix this?